Good evening, everyone. This is our last uh, session of this summer camp. So for the f past few days, we could see God working, uh, doing a lot of works in our lives. We thank God for this. Tonight, we're going to read uh, the word in Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9 from verse 11 to 12. But Christ being come on a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. We read two verses. Actually, for this week, uh, what we talked about is based on Je Jeremiah 31 from verse 31 to 34. We meeting Jesus and becoming one with Jesus, and as we interchange with Jesus, when the heart of Jesus and my heart are connected, we can feel, we can experience a lot how Jesus is working alive in our lives. Uh, just a little while ago, we watched a documentary on uh, Sister Moon Hae Jin. When I first heard that she had an accident, uh, she was helping out construction in Ghana, and uh, the, the wood where she stepped on, it kind of broke, and she fell. And the f uh, her first uh, spine bone was broken, and because of that, she couldn't walk, she couldn't stand at all. When she was first taken to the hospital, hospital in Ghana, they thought that there was no problem, so they told sent her to sent her home. But when she came back to came back to the church, that's when she she did not feel she could not feel her legs. Uh, the but we could not have her operated in the hospital in Africa, so we had to bring her back to Korea as soon as possible. But back then, the flight that uh, that's that the shortest and shortest uh, flight from Ghana to Korea was our, uh, air, air, airline company Arab Emirates, Arab Emirates, and we kind of requested that uh, this this woman went to Ghana and she her first spine bone is broken, so we want to we want to take her back to Korea, but the airline company uh, asked us if she could sit in the seat. Uh, we told them no, she cannot sit, so she have to lie on the floor lie on the bed. So we pleaded and pleaded, but they said we have regulations in our airplane airline company. You know, if we, if we could, we, if even if it's okay, if it's okay, we wanted to, we wanted to have her lie maybe on the on the corridor, but they said no. They said if she could said that that's okay, but if not, we cannot have her on our plane. But you wanted to take her from Africa to Korea as soon as possible. But they refused, and the second uh, second fastest uh, air flight from Ghana to Korea was the uh, Lufthansa, Lufthansa airline, which uh, had uh, which had a transit in uh, Germany, and then came to Korea. And we made a request, and they said maybe not today, but tomorrow we can take the flight. Why not today? Uh, we asked them. They said our our plane have already left from Germany to Ghana. But before coming to Ghana, we have to maybe take we have to take out 14 seats on the plane, and we have to put the bed put a bed instead. So we have to do it in in Germany. So, so the so we decided to take her uh, through the Lufthansa airline company. And I called the pastor who was in Frankfurt in Germany, and I called him, "Where are you?" He said he was elsewhere. He was not in Frankfurt, but he was elsewhere. He said that he, in the morning he went to other city. I told him we have this and this kind of problem, so maybe you should go back to Frankfurt and uh, well, we should maybe help her out from the plane. So we brought all the sis brothers and sisters in Ghana, uh, in, in Germany. We brought all the brothers and sisters in Germany together and we asked them if there is any hospital that was good at operating the spine bone in Frankfurt. So the older sisters and brothers went out to look for the look for the hospital. And the plane finally arrived at Frankfurt. 
But none of the passengers were supposed to get out. But first, uh, Sister Munejin was supposed to, was supposed to get down. And she got out of the plane and she was taken to the hospital. And they had to start the, they had to start the operation as soon as possible. So we sent Sister Munejin's uh, mother to Frankfurt in Germany. Uh, so far, about 10,000 students, they have volunteered abroad. But there was nearly no accident whatsoever. But this accident of Sister Munejin kind of broke our hearts. But amazingly, after the operation, the doctors said they're going to they're gonna operate first on the back side and then they have to operate her again on the chest side. But with the electric uh, so they have to cut all the all, all the side bones. But when I heard uh, the way how they were going to operate operate her, it really broke my heart. I don't know why doctors doctors are supposed to talk like that. But fortunately, they did not cut those side bones, but they kind of uh, pushed uh, those uh, two, two side bones, and they made a little space and they did the, they, they did the operation through the gap. So in Frankfurt, uh, she kind of recovered and she came back to Korea. And she was hospitalized in Hanyang University Hospital. And I went to the hospital and I saw her for, for the first time after the accident. It was the same leg, but because the, the, the nerve was disconnected, but she couldn't do anything with that leg. So she, this leg became... A useless leg. Hejin, Hejin. We know that God leaves. God, there's nothing that He cannot do. Although I'm not your biological father, but I want you to be healed. But I'm sure that God must want that too, so let us pray together. You know, you know, all the doctors they were saying what we were doing was useless, but they said something some they all that they speak they talked about was despair. Some people they were speaking against me. When Hajin is gonna walk, don't talk nonsense. There there are people who are saying like that. But even until now, we don't think that he she's not gonna walk, although about a dozen years has passed. But we believe that God's gonna let her let her work. But as the time as the time passes, what's amazing is because her legs, uh, the nerve, the nerve, the nerve is disconnected. So her have to, her, her legs has to get thinner, and only the bones have to be left. The, the all the muscles have to have to have to disappear. But sir, the elder uh, Hang Yo Jong, he kind of uh, looks after her. But when when she was when she was you know swimming and moving around, uh, actually these legs were supposed to be just dragged because she cannot move them. But at one point we could see that she was actually moving those legs. After believing in Jesus, sometime I had to I almost I nearly died because of my stomach problem. Sometime I some one day I nearly uh, died because of my heart problem. But each time I could see God helping me, and now I became very healthy and I'm well. I'm living well now. God who is working alive in us when his heart is connected to us when we become one hearted from that point on our heart becomes our heart becomes one with God so at that point we can see amazing truth arising from there Hejin, uh, she can walk now. Well, it's true, she cannot walk by herself. She's walking with the robot. When she first walked, oh, they say that 70% of the, with the 70% help of the robot, 75% uh, of the help of the robot, with her own strength, was uh, 25%. So she had this 25%. 5% of ability to walk and no doctor was able to believe that. But 
And as she was doing that training, we could see how the, the, the muscle was getting bigger. And uh, the, the muscle got bigger and she got 3.5 kilos of more muscle. And we're waiting for the day when uh, she's going to walk. So every day having this hope in us, we are waiting for that day. Though sometimes she was in despair, sometimes she was in disappointment, but God is working in her heart. So with smile in her face, she studied and she's working. And when I see her doing, work, doing this precious work, I'm so thankful before God. But ju just one thing that I don't know is that why didn't God, you know, he heal her earlier? Why is God waiting until today? But one thing I know is that His thought and our thought are different. I have to look for the story of Hezin in the Bible, but I don't see the story of Hezin in the Bible yet. You know, the, the story of receiving forgiveness of sin, it's, it, it's applied to everyone, so we can find that story, but for her leg, we are praying by having faith in God, and we believe that she, she's going to be healed. So she's going to be healed someday. And she's gaining more uh, muscles. And many people, they really marvel to see her. So I feel like even tomorrow morning, she can walk anytime. So maybe this year or next year, I'm still wait we are still waiting for her to walk. Although uh, about a dozen years, about a decade passed. But what is hopeful is that every day she's getting better and she's gaining more muscle. Although doctors are saying that this is impossible, by the grace of God, this is possible and this is actually happening to us. So we are waiting for the day when Hajjan is going to walk. So please, everyone, pray for her. Uh, let me let me talk. Let me say it one more time. You know, once I was disconnected with God because I because of my sin, but one day, uh, there is one thing that I became one with. It was the heart. Many places in the Bible. The uh, Bible talks about how Jesus died on the cross and shed His blood and died for our sins. His death, His death, the Bible says that through His death, He paid the wages of sin. But unfortunately, although the Bible says so, many people today, many churchgoers today, they still believe that they are sinners. So which, which is right? Of course we sin and we are sinners. So, imagine me and my son, we went to a restaurant, we had a meal. I'll, t I'll, I'll talk to my son saying, uh, son, I'm a little busy, so I'll, I'll go first. So you finish your meal, you come later. And on my way out, I paid for the, I paid for the menu that we, we took. Although my son didn't pay for the menu that he took, I paid for my, my menu or his menu. So actually, when I pay for both, and it is like him already paying for it. If the restaurant asks for ask him to pay again, then that there will be a, there will be a you know, problem. He will be like, you know, my father paid for me. You know, so it makes no sense if the re restaurant requires him to pay again. Just like that, our sins, it was not, I, I didn't wash it, but Jesus washed it in our place. Jesus, when he, when he was crucified on the cross, Jesus had no reason to be crucified, actually. But Jesus, for our sins' sake, he was crucified on the cross, for our sins' sake. If so, because he paid for the wages of our sin, it is sure, it is, it is sure that our sins are washed. You know, they say they believe in Jesus, but what do you mean by believing in Jesus if you don't believe that? You know, in each church, in every church, they, you know, they, they put this cross in their chapel or in their building. But Jesus died for their sins. If, but if we are still sinners, then what's the point of Jesus dying on the cross? Today, we read Hebrews chapter 9. But when we come to 
I will finish first uh, the what we talked about in the morning in Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 11, it says, it says this. Now therefore go to speak to the men of the Judah. Oh, sorry. Hebrews 10, 11. It was 10, 11, it says, And every priest standeth at daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. Hebrews chapter, uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1, it says that uh, the law is the law is the uh, shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things. So giving sacrifices in, in the Bible is, it is a shadow of Jesus coming into this world and dying for our sins. So giving offerings for our sins, that's the shadow of Jesus coming on this earth and dying for our sins. So the priest giving offerings for the sin and Jesus' death on the cross, there is one difference between these two offerings. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1 it says that it says that for the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offered ear by ear so giving offerings according to the law this is the shadow of Jesus coming into this world and dying for our sins being crucified on the cross so this is a shadow of things to come not the very image so in order to explain how Jesus was supposed to come and die for our sins, they talked about this as a shadow of Jesus. So there's a part that are the same, but there is a part that is different. For example, with this microphone, imagine this is a bat. Imagine this is a bat that you hit with. So actually when I say, let's say this is a bat, then when, when you say that, it's, it's actually a microphone, it's not a bat. Imagine with this microphone, I hit someone as, as if it was a bat. So this was, just, was, this was just an example. This is not actually a bat. Just like that, giving offerings with a, with a goat, with a ship, with ship. So that's not a real sacrifice, but this was a shadow of the sacrifice of Jesus who came on this earth to die for our sins. So this was, a, this was an example killing ox, killing calf, killing sheep, goats. So this was a shadow of Jesus who was supposed to go, supposed, who was supposed to come and be crucified on the cross for our sins. So this was to show and teach us how Jesus was going to come. But just like, you know, this is a microphone, but if I say, let's say this is a, you know, this is a bad. So this is just an example. So giving offering, giving sheep and goat as an offering. So that's a shadow of Jesus, Jesus coming on this earth. So when you say that, when you say a shadow, there are similarity, similarity with the real, real body, but because there's a shadow, there are differences also. So the offering of the goat and offering of Jesus, there are some differences that we can find. And what are those differences? Bible says, For the law having a shed of good things to come and not the very image of the things. When you come down now to verse chapter 10, verse 10, when you go down to chapter 10, verse 10, By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Yes, this is saying that we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. Now let's go to verse 11. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. Why? The priest, when you give, a, when you give an offering, if, if one offering that it gives can wash our sins away eternally, there is no need to there's no need for him to give daily offering daily you know give offering daily in the old testament you know the offerings of killing cows and goats actually this was to wash our sin but these were the shadow of Jesus they can wash our sins but 
is momentarily. It cannot wash our sins away eternally. It was momentary, not eternal. So, so if the priest gives the offering and if the the offering could wash our sin, no, sins away eternally, there's no need to, uh, there is no need for the priest to give the offering often times. And after giving the offering, if we don't sin, that's okay there. But because if we sin again, we become sinner again. So the priest, they would have to give the offering again and again. So even if even if they wash their sin giving by giving an offering, they they still have to give another offering to wash their sin again because they sinned again. Now let's see Hebrews chapter 10 verse 10. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. It says Jesus he died. His body was given as an offering once. So he said once. So by one offering that he gave, he washed our sins, all sins. So Jesus' offering, his offering was eternal. But uh, the goat, the sheep, the offering of sheep, offering of uh, goat, those offerings, they were not eternal, but they were momentary. It was momentary. He just washed the sin that they committed at that point. Why? It's very simple. In this world that we are living now, and the world of the kingdom of heaven, they are different. They are different. In the kingdom of heaven, it's an it's an it's an eternal kingdom. When you go to heaven, you're not going to die forever, and we're not going to go to heaven with this body because this but this this body is going to die. Everything's eternal in that kingdom. That is why we call it an etern etern eternal kingdom. And the world where we are now living, it's, it belongs to the realm of time. Here, the time flows. When time flows, we grow old and we die. So everything changes in this world. Why? Because we belong to the realm of time. So, in, for instance, if Jesus... If Jesus gave his offering on this earth because it belongs to the realm of time, in the realm of time we have past, present, and future. So in this world, even if you wash your sin, it's not eternal, but it's temporary. You know, the gold does not, you know, rot, does not rust. You know, if you go to the, you know, Gyeongju, you know, museum, if you see the, you know, golden, you know, crown, it's all rusty. You know, those, you know, it's, 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 it gets red, it gets, it gets less rusty, but does but it's not like it doesn't, it doesn't get rusty at all. So when time passes, everything fades. So everything changes and fades in this world. You know, it everything changes, even diamond, it changes. If it's on the, this earth, it changes. So when we see something is eternal, it doesn't change at all. But the kingdom of heaven is eternal kingdom. So there, we don't grow old, we don't die, we don't change at all. There, we're going to live forever. That is why everything that happens in this world is momentary. So giving an offering of sin, giving a sin offering by killing a goat, it applies and it's effective just for a moment. And there's a shadow of Jesus. So if they sin again, they become sinner again. So they have to give another offering for their sin. So each time they sin, they have to give offering. But if you see Hebrews again, verse 11, Hebrews 10, verse 11. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. Verse 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. If so... The offering of Jesus Christ, why is it eternal sacrifice? But why killing a goat, killing a sheep, why is it momentary sacrifice? So the verse that explains it well 
That's Hebrews 9 verse 11. When you go to Hebrews chapter 9 verse 11, but Christ being come an high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Here, uh, the, here it, it, it talks about this tabernacle. So, when you say a tabernacle built with hands, this is when Moses went out of Egypt when they came to the mountain Sinai. Moses went up to the top of mountain Sinai and he received two tablets of stone. God gave him two tablets of stones, and afterwards, for the pa for the forty days, God showed him the heavenly tabernacle to him. For forty days, as he exam after having seen this heavenly tabernacle, Moses came down to Moses came down from the mountain, holding this two tablet of, tablet of stone on each arm. But in his heart. He had this image of the tabernacle that he saw in heaven. It was on his heart. So he came down. And the heavenly tabernacle that he saw, he built it as he saw on the earth. So we call it, we, they call it a tent. So they built it as a temporary building. So it was a tent. So we call it a, tab a tabernacle. That's where they gave offering. So, it was in this world, in this realm of time. So, this repeated over and over again. They sin, they give offering, they sin and give offering. Here in chapter 9, verse 11, But Christ being come, and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. That is, Heavenly tabernacle. Do you understand? The heavenly tabernacle, the heavenly tabernacle is not not built with hands of men, but the earthly tabernacle that was built with hands of men. So the the tabernacle which was not built with hands of men, it represents the heavenly tabernacle. So the the priest of this this earth. They were giving offerings on this earth. The so effect of this offering was temporary. But in the heaven, everything is eternal. So even the offering that they gave was eternal. Do you understand? So if oh, they, Jesus gave his offering on in this earthly tabernacle, he would have he would have had, he would have died he would have had to die again and again, many times. So no matter how many times he may die, he would not be able to wash his sins. So God did not went into the earthly tabernacle, but He went into the tabernacle which was in heaven, and in heaven everything is eternal. So in earthly, in heavenly tabernacle, the eternal sacrifice could be made. Amen. Now maybe we'll have to read some passages in the Bible. Hebrews chapter ten, verse ten. Let's read it. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for the Bible says once. Verse 11. And every priest standeth daily ministry and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices. So, if the sacrifice that they gave could wash their sins eternally, they, they, did, they wouldn't have to give uh, the offerings every day. So, the, the, the offering that they gave was momentary. So, when you read verse 12, But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. So, when Jesus died on the cross, this sacrifice that Jesus gave, because this, he gave this eternal sacrifice in the in heaven, our sins were washed eternally. Amen. Verse thirteen. For hence, from henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. Verse fourteen. 
Let's read it all together with a loud, in a loud voice. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. You know, in our lives we commit sin against, we ask for forgiveness. That's how, that's what we've been doing. But if Jesus had sprinkled his, his blood on this earthly tabernacle, he would have had to die thousands of times, but still it would not be sufficient because we sin, we sin a lot. But Jesus, he went and sprinkled his blood in the heavenly tabernacle, and through that he accomplished eternal redemption, eternal sacrifice. So this one offering that he gave, because in the heavenly tabernacle everything is everything is eternal, the sacrifice. So the blood that he sprinkled, it washed our sins eternally. And because we belong to this earth, uh, realm of time, there's nothing eternal here. As we as time passes, we have to heal, we have to heal, we have to wash our sins again. That's why he said in verse 14 that for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. So it's not that we have to receive the forgiveness of sin, but the forgiveness of sin is already accomplished and Jesus paid the wages of our sins by giving his own body as an offering. So it was already paid. So tonight, what do you have to do You have to simply believe this fact that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. Amen. Amen. Now, let's read more passages in the Bible. Verse 14 again. Let's read it all together. Verse 14. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sancti sanctified. They are, they're, they're made what? Forever them that are sanctified. It forever, Amen. So are you are you are you sinner? Are you sinner? If you're still sinner, raise your hand, please. If you're still sinner, uh, everyone is showing me X. So you mean you are not, right? So you can clear, you can believe that you are all made righteous, right? Amen. Oh yeah, I see this O's here. Yes. Yes, by the blood of Jesus, our sins are washed eternally. And if you read more, verse 15, whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us, for after that he had said before, verse 16, this is the covenant that I will make with, the, with them after those days, saith the Lord. I put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. What's, what does it say next? And their sins and iniquities, what? And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Does God remember our sin? No, He doesn't. So, Jeremiah 31, verse 31. He says, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the, in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, and said the Lord. Verse 33, But this shall be the covenant that I, that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my law in their, in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God, and they shall be my people. Verse 34, And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greater, greatest of them, said the Lord. For I'll forgive their iniquity and I'll remember their sin no more. So, the first covenant that God made with the house of Israel was the, command, this was the law. According to the law, if you keep it, you will be blessed. If you break it, you will be cursed. 
But because human, as a human being, we always sin. Because as human being, we always sin, so it cannot work that way. So God, if you keep the law well, you are going to be blessed. If you break, you'll be cursed. So, but nobody could be well, nobody could be justified through the deeds of the law. But God, because God loved us, He had to give us a new law. You know, if as you look after your children, you must have experienced it. Sometimes your children will be stubborn and they will ins insist on certain thing, insist on certain thing, right? But you know, because parents, because they want to educate them well, sometimes they want to you know beat them with a cane. Because if you hit them with a cane, that will leave them a wound. So sometimes the parents will they they will just let the child do what he wants. You know, that's like that's how parents are. And later, when the child grow older, uh, you will teach them what actually what, how it is. So you know, as a parent, sometimes you educate them, sometimes you let them do what they want. So you they have the, you have this push and pulls. So you let them under. Sometimes you have to, you let them understand. You cannot. You, you don't have to just always hit them and say this is right and this is wrong. But sometimes you wait and sometimes let them do what they want. So as I do my as I live my spiritual life, when I read when I read this kind of part, it was really amazing because when Jesus died on the cross. Just like the word in the Old Testament, because we now we belong to the realm of time, you know, thousands of years, there were a hundred million, ten billion, pe many people they sin every day, and if Jesus have Jesus die for those people, even if he died thousand times in a day, that will not be sufficient for him to wash our sins. So Jesus did not sprinkle his blood on the altar which was in the heaven in on the earth. But it came into this tabernacle, which does not belong to this building, but the tabernacle which is not made with the hands of men. So not with the blood of goat and blood of sheep, but with his own blood, he fulfilled eternal redemption and went into the temple. And he went into the heavenly tabernacle and sprinkled his blood on the altar. So, so it's not like our sins are washed up to a certain date, but Jesus fulfilled eternal redemption. So this blood which was shed 2,000 years ago, even today, even the sins that we are committing today, even the sins of our descendants, it is washing, it has washed those sins eternally. Let's read more, Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews 10 verse 16. Verse 15, whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us after the, after the for after that he had said before. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, said the Lord. I will put my law into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. So the, t the Ten Commandments written in the tablet of stone, and we sin. But here, uh, verse 16, it says that now Jesus wants, wants to put his law in our hearts, and in our mind. So on the tablet of stone, there is this a law saying you shall not commit adultery. Although there is that law on the tablet of stone, but we know in our heart, when you have the heart to commit adultery, heart, to, heart wanting to commit adultery, you commit adultery in your heart. If you have the heart to tell a lie, then you will tell a lie. That's why how that's why we break the laws. But that's why Jesus said he will write his law in our heart. He will put his law in our hearts. So as I said this morning, this heart of Jesus. You know, the blind man, he came out to beg, but he encountered, he came across Jesus. Jesus put the mud on his eyes and said, Now go to the pool of Siloam and wash. This blind man, he never thought of going to Siloam to wash. That day just came out to beg as usual and he wanted to buy some bread and buy certain things to eat, buy maybe his clothes. So he came out to beg as usual. But Jesus told him to go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So this is, this beg, this uh, blind man, he, or, he actually he originally intended to beg, but instead of following his own thought, he heard the word of Jesus and this word of Jesus 
defeated his thought, and he now went to the pool of Siloam and washed. So this blind man, he only went to the pool of Siloam, not according to his own will, but with the word, the word of Jesus came into his heart and let him go to the pool of Siloam. When you see John chapter 13, verse 2, It says, Satan, in the heart of Judas Iscariot, put the thought of betraying Jesus. You know, when you drive a car, it's not like you have to try to pull and roll the, you know, roll, roll, roll the tires, but if you turn on your, if you, you know, start your engine, You know when you turn on when when you when you turn on when you start the car, you know the engine works to you know roll the roll the tires. So it's not you to you know push the car and roll the tires to let uh, let the car run. But when when your sins are washed, when Jesus died for when Jesus died for your sins, he accomplished eternal redemption. So in the old in the in the Old Testament, whenever they give offering, it only washed the sin that they committed at the, at that point. But Jesus, holding his with his own blood, he did not sprinkle them on the altar that is in that is in the on the earth. But he went to the heavenly tabernacle and sprinkled his blood. That Hebrews chapter that Hebrews chapter nine, verse eleven, that but Christ being. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Amen. So when Jesus was, when we give offerings in the earthly tabernacle, He washes our sins temporarily, but Jesus gave His offering in the heavenly tabernacle to wash our sins away eternally. So for example, you know, this blind man who wanted to beg and buy maybe something to eat that day, but he heard the word of Jesus saying, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So this blind man, he went without, instead of begging, he went to the pool of Siloam to wash. So what led him? So the word of Jesus led him. So he was led, he, he was led by the word of Jesus. So, you thought you were sinners. But when you came to believe that your sins are washed through the shedding of blood of Jesus, this faith... Oh, I'm no longer a sinner. I'm righteous. This faith lets you say that out loud. And even if you know that Jesus died on the cross, but if you do not know the eternal redemption that He made, if you sin again, you still think that you are a sinner again. That's how you came to. That's what you would think. But Jesus, when He died and He shed His, He sprinkled His blood in the heavenly tabernacle, and when you believe that His blood is shed in the heavenly tabernacle, this faith is not your heart, your thought, but that's the heart of Jesus. The blind man, when he went to the pool of Siloam, he went to wash there, but it wasn't, well, it wasn't for his own heart. His, his original heart was to beg there and ask for money and buy bread with it and make his living with it. But when he heard the word of Jesus saying, Now go to the pool of Siloam and wash, this word came into his heart, and this word, this word of Jesus defeated and pushed away the thought, of, thought, the thought of begging there. So that's when he stopped begging, and the word of Jesus led him, and being led by the word of Jesus, he went to the pool of Siloam, and he washed. That's how he came to open his eyes. So our life that we are living, we are not living according to our thoughts, but when the word of Jesus comes in, come in, comes into our heart, when we are guided by this word, this this heart of Jesus, the heart of Jesus is not lustful, is not adulterous heart, is not you know heart wanting to commit theft. So if this heart of Jesus leads our heart, it's no longer our thought, but this heart of Jesus, when we live with this heart. 
we will be freed from sin, we will be able to live a bright and holy life. So we can live a bright and bright and bright life with the heart of Jesus, but we sin when we live with our with our own heart. So knowing that we men we can sin, Jesus knew it beforehand and washed our sins eternally. When I say that, some people say, "Oh, then we can sin freely, huh?" Then that's that's what they would. That's when they would think, "Oh no, we cannot sin freely." But any everyone, do we not sin freely? We sin. We sin recklessly. Sometimes we try to be careful not to sin, but that doesn't mean we do not we do not sin. We sin actually. So even if you sin, you can still go to heaven if Jesus when Jesus washes. So even if you don't even if you try not to sin, but if your sins are not washed, you'll go to hell. What is important is what is important is Jesus washed our sins away. And when you live with the heart of Jesus, that's when we can live a bright, holy life. Do you understand? So, what is important here? It is true, our sins are washed with the blood of Jesus. When you believe that in your hearts, this word of Jesus will come into our heart and let us live bright and grateful life, overcoming sin, living holy life. Through the Word of God, so that's how Bible leads our lives. Uh, so this may sound a little complicated. I don't know if you have understood it, but you know the the method of Old Testament giving offering of sheep, offering of goats, it's momentary. It's one use, but the death, but the offering of Jesus, because His blood was sprinkled on the altar in the heavenly in the, in, of uh, in the altar of the heavenly tabernacle, He accomplished eternal redemption. So Jesus washed. Sins of who came before Jesus. He also washed the sins of those who were present with Jesus. Jesus' blood also washed the sins of us who are born after two thousand years, two thousand years of His birth. So that's how we came to be able to go to heaven by His blood. But most people today, they still believe that they are sinners because they sinned. Yes, when we sin, we seem to be sinners. But if this sin is also washed, then we are not sinner, but we are still righteous. Amen. If you raise, if you understand, please show me that you understood. Okay, I see that you, you, all of you understood. So then, everyone, it's not that we are doing something; we have to do something to wash our sins. But Jesus, in order to wash our sins eternally. He shed his blood on the cross, and he went into the heavenly tabernacle and sprinkled his blood on the altar, and that's how he came to wash all our sins away eternally. So the most important thing here, as a Christian who believes in Jesus, no matter what my thought says, if the Bible says our sins are washed through the blood of Jesus, because this is the word of God, it is true that our sins are washed. We have to simply believe it. You know, some people say, oh, one day I received this fire. You know, don't believe the fire. Don't believe the water. Don't believe anything else. But believe, believing in Jesus means believing in His Word. So, when I, after realizing this truth in the Bible, I could see Jesus working alive in my heart. I saw that many times. You know, I, I, it seemed like I was living with my own heart. But since I believed in the word of Jesus, just like Jesus said to the blind man, go to the pool of Siloam and wash, it is not with his own thought that he went to wash, but this word of God, word of Jesus led him to go to the pool and wash. And when Jesus said to the man who had an infirmity for 38 years, Although he cannot stand up by his own will, but following the word of Jesus, he stood up and he walked. So believing in the word of Jesus, it means believing in Jesus. So everyone, my sins are washed. My sins are washed. So believing in this word, We accept this word that our sins are washed through His blood. When you accept it into your heart, 
That's when the word of Jesus, the heart of Jesus starts working in your life. And it will give you power to overcome sin. It will give you the power to live a bright and blessed life. And moreover, but however, still there are times when you commit sin. There are times when you fall into sin again. But don't be bound by the sin. But remember, have the faith in you that Jesus washed your sins again. And your, life, your heart will be reunited with Jesus. And you will see how the Bible, the word, Scripture leads your life. And it will make your life brighter and more blessed. In 1962, before receiving salvation, before receiving forgiveness of sin, my life was dark and my life was poor. I was starving. I had to steal fruit from others' fruit, fruit tree farms. And I, I told lies many times. And every day I asked for forgiveness. But when I looked at the Bible, already, God said, I will forgive their iniquity. I will remember their sin no more. So there are two covenants here. There are two laws here. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Now those who are in Jesus Christ, there is no more condemnation. For by for the law of the, for the life and for the life and Holy Spirit in the in Jesus freed us from the law of sin and death. The law of life and spirit, it here the law of sin and death represents a commandment. The commandment makes us sinner, and eventually it let us face death. So, according to the law, we are supposed to face death. According to the law, when you keep the law, you are blessed. If you break, break the law, you are cursed. But there is no one who could keep the law perfectly. So, everybody was supposed to be cursed according to the law. But when you read the Bible thoroughly, the new covenant wasn't like that. It was different from the it was different from the, the commandment. And it's accepting this word by faith. And when we accept this word by faith, it was the word of Jesus. It, it was the heart of Jesus. So Jesus died and he washed our sins away. Jesus, if he could not wash our sins away, he wouldn't have died on the cross. So Jesus died on the cross. It is Jesus' heart. When you accept it in your heart, just like the blind man who went to the pool of Siloam and he came seeing, and we human beings who have sinned a lot, when we, when we accept the word of Jesus, our sins are washed. And from then on, the heart of Jesus comes into our heart. Oh, so that's why he said, in those days, I'll put my laws, I'll put my laws in, in their inward parts and I'll write them in their minds. So Jesus did not simply die, but Jesus died to wash our sins away. And by Jesus being crucified on the cross, he washed our sins away. That, this is the heart of Jesus. And this word, when you accept it in your heart, that, that's when, oh yeah, my sins are washed on the cross. Amen. You can believe it. Yeah, that's what Bible says. So believing in the Bible means believing in the heart of Jesus. That's how we are made righteous. That's how we are made holy. In 1962, until that day I was a sinner. It's not that Jesus didn't wash my sins, but he, had, he did wash my sins away. But I believed that I was a sinner because I was sinning. I didn't know that Jesus even washed those sins. But Jesus' blood on the cross, it, washed, it did not just wash one sin of mine, but it washed all my sins away. And I could see that I, my sins were all washed. It wasn't my heart, it was the heart of Jesus. Since that day, heart of Jesus led my life. Although it was the same Bible, but as I was reading it, it, it was so different to me. 
Everybody else was reading the same Bible, but they were still calling themselves sinners. You know, they were saying, oh, our sins are all washed. Uh, God said in Isaiah chapter, chapter uh, 55, 53 verse 5, that all that, but he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. So Jesus died and washed all our sins away. But uh, but our sins are washed. It wasn't our it isn't our thought, but it is the heart of Jesus. When he was crucified, just like the heart of Jesus let the man who had an infirmity for 38 years walked, Jesus' heart also let the blind man wash his eyes in Siloam, and it let, it let us also work as Christ. So, in Romans chapter 3, verse 24, it said, Romans 4, verse 25, it says, He was, He, Romans uh, 4, verse 25, uh, it, said, it, it says, Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. So Jesus, his, his hands were nailed, he was crucified, and this is why you are justified. So we can see that our sins are washed with, his, with, with him being crucified. Although Jesus died on the cross, all the people, they know it. If you still call yourself sinners, that only means Jesus' Jesus's cross failed. Now, we have to abandon our thought. We have to believe in the word of Jesus. Because the word of the, word of the Bible is the, word of Je- the heart of Jesus. When the heart of Jesus comes into our heart and starts working, from that point on, we can have peace in our heart. We can have holiness in our heart. We can have the power of God working in our lives. And we'll be able to enjoy and rejoice with the blessing in our hearts. 1962, that day, I came to believe in God. And I came to believe the cross of Jesus. And the blood of, blood of the cross washed all my sins away. I had the assurance from the day that I had this assurance in my heart. In my heart, the heart of Jesus came into my heart and started leading, start leading my heart. Of course, sometimes, Satan gives me certain tem- temptations. I still have my own thoughts in me. But from that point on, when we were led by the heart of Jesus, uh, from the moment that he said, I'll put my laws in their inward inward parts, I'll write them in their mind, from that point on, I remember their in- I'll, for- I'll forgive their iniquity, I'll remember their sin no more. I could come to believe in this word. And fr- from that point on, Jesus came into my heart. And before then, when a temptation comes into my heart, when I, when I, I face a trial of Satan, it was not me fighting against it anymore, but it was the word of Jesus helping me to fight that and let me out of it. When I felt sick, when, my, when I had a stomach problem, when I had heart problem, in, 19, in 1999, I had, I had a really difficult, hard time then. I, almost, I nearly died, but God healed me, and I could see really Jesus working in my life. And when, whenever I pray, I could see Him answering our prayer. And we are thankful that we are able to have this wonderful seminar. Although we read the same Bible, but those who have their human, humanistic thought, they still read sinners in the Bible. But those who accept the Word of God as it is, they will read the truth that our sins are washed on the cross, so therefore we are made righteous. So they will read out righteous and they will have faith in them. So even if you called yourself so until now a, a sinner, from tonight on, please believe in the word. God said, I will forgive their iniquity 
I will remember their sin no more, saith the Lord. He is telling you this. So believe in this word. Although, just like the woman who was caught in the v e r a c t i v e adultery, we can only be destroyed by the law, but God established His new covenant. Before judging the woman who was caught in the act of adultery, Jesus wrote the second covenant on the ground, and He settled the second law, and no longer the law of sin and death, the commandment. When Jesus saw the woman with the law of life and, life and spirit, Jesus did not see a sinner. According to the commandment, we are sinners. But when you see, when you see ourselves through the blood of Jesus, because our sins are all washed, we are sanctified and we are justified. So accept the word of Jesus that you are sanctified and you're justified. Wear that righteousness, wear that holiness. Now let us praise God. Let us live blessed life. I hope you become like that. Let us pray. Loving Father God, we thank you. Because of our sins, we had to be destroyed, we had to be cursed. But Jesus came, and you died on the cross, and you were cursed and punished in our, punished in our place. When you say He was punished and he, he was cursed in our place, means it has the same effect as we being cursed and we being crucified. So that's how you made us righteous and holy. Unfortunately, Satan deceives many people and Satan let them still remember their sins that they committed. So let them call themselves sinners. But we are no longer sinners. We believe. Although it's true that we sinned, but we believe that Jesus died on the cross to finish our sins. So that's how we are made holy and righteous. Tonight, let us all have the faith that Jesus' blood washed our sins and we are no longer sinners but we are, because we are all made righteous. Let us not be led by our thought, but let us all be the workers of the gospel. Please bless us. Through this summer camp, we were able to witness this word. So let this word live, work alive in our hearts, and let us live blessed and hopeful life. And Sister m u n e j i n he has this heart leg problems. We thank you, Lord. So please bless her and cure her so that she could walk as soon as possible. Not only her, but let all of us, while we live in this world, if there's any discomfort, if there's anything uncomfortable, please look after us. Please take care of us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. d Amen. Thank you, everyone. With this, we'll end this summer camp. Thank you very much.